Chapter 20 of the battle which Amadis had with Arcalus, the enchanter, and how he es escaped from his enchantment. Orindalia, the lady who Amadis had delivered, made such a dole over him as was pitiful to hear. The wife of Arcalus comforted her so well as she could, for she was of a disposition clean contrary to her husband, and always besought God in her prayers to turn his heart. As they were thus together, they saw two damsels enter the hall, each bearing in her hands many lighted candles, which they placed along the sides of the chamber wherein Amadis lay, the ladies who beheld them this while being neither able to speak nor move. One of the damsels took a book from a casket which she brought under her arm, and read from it aloud. At many at times a voice answered her, and presently all in the chamber. Then there came another book through the floor of the chamber, whirling as if driven by the wind, for it stopped at the feet of her who read, and she took it and broke it into four parts, and burnt them at the sides of the chamber where the candles stood. Then she went to Amadis and took him by the hand. Arise, sir, for you lie uneasy. And Amadis arose and cried, Holy Mary, what is this? I was well nigh dead. Search, Sir Knight, replied Dam the damsel, such as a man as you should not perish in this sort, for by your hand must others die who better deserve it. And with that, without more words, both damsels returned thither from whence they came. Then Amadis had asked what passed, and Grindalia had told him all. I felt him disarm me, he said. But all seems as if in a dream. Then, arming himself in the harness of Archelaus, he said to his wife, Look to this lady well till I return. And he went to deliver Gandolin. The men of Archelaus, seeing him thus armed, ran all ways. But he descended the steps and through the hall where he had slain the jailer, and so to the dungeon, a dreadful place it was for the captives, in length a hundred times as far as a man's spread arm can reach, only the other half of that span wide, dark, for neither light nor air could enter, and so full was it that it was crowded. Amadis came to the door and called, Gandolin! But he who was like one of the dead, hearing the voice, was greatly terrified, and made no answer, for he believed that his master was slain, and he himself enchanted. Gandolin, where art thou? again cried Amadis. O oh God, will he not answer? And as and he said to the prisoners, Tell me, for God's sake, is the squire living whom they just now cast here? But then the dwarf knew his voice and answered, Here we are. Thereat greatly greatly rejoicing, Amadis went to the went to the lamp in the hall, kindled torches, and took them to the dungeon, and loosed Gandolin's chain, for he leered, lay nearest the door, and bade him deliver his comrades. They came from the dungeon, a hundred and fifteen men in all, of whom thirty were knights, and they followed Amadis, exclaiming, O oh, fortunate knight! Even so did our saver go out from hell, leading, leading away his servants whom he had delivered. Christ give thee thy reward! And when they came to the sunlight and open sky, they fell upon their knees, and with lifted hands blessed God who had given the knight strength to their deliverance. Amadis, seeing their faces so pale and overspent that they seemed like the dead rather than the living creatures, was moved to exceeding compassion. One among them he remarked for his better shape and stature, who came forward and asked what they should call their deliverer, and hearing it was Amadis, replied that he was also of King Luzart's court, being by name Brandoisi, Branduyas. Right glad was Amadis thereof, thereof, for he had often heard his good report and the sorrow that there was for his loss. The other prisoners then confessed their bounden duty to him, and desired him to appoint what they should do, and he willed them, willed them each to do as he best thought. They telling him what they, whatever, what, wherever they might be, they should be at his command, departed, Brandoilus and his two squires only remaining with Amadis. Now they went to the wife of Archelaus. Lady, said Amadis, for your sake and for the sake of these women, I forbear to set the castle on fire. She answered him, weeping, God is witness to the trouble and grief I endured for my husband's evil ways, but I must obey him and pray for his amendment. Now I am at your mercy. Then Amadis request arms for Brandoius and fit garments for Grindalia. Give them, said he. If it please you, at your free will, the horse and arms of Archelaus I must take, for he has taken mine, and then a sword of more value than all this. 
This the, the dame willingly accorded, and she besought them to take food before they departed, and the best vivens were brought forth, so short warning could afford. But Grandalia would not eat, uneasy to be gone, whereat the knight smiled, and still more at the dwarf, who could eat nothing, and scarcely could he speak, and his color was gone. Dwarf, said Amadis, shall we wait for Archelaus, that I may give thee boon which you, you, which you released? Sir, said he, so dear hath that cost me, that never while I live will I beg another. Let us go before the devil come back again. I cannot stand upon the leg he hung me by, and my nose is so full of brimstone smoke of that fire that I can do nothing but sneeze. So after they had repasted and took leave of the dame, she commended Amadis to God, said, I pray God that there may be peace between me and you. Certes, lady, quoth he, however that may be, there will be peace between you and me, for you have deserved it. And the time came when these words greatly profited the lady. They departed together, and on the second day separated Grandalia and Briandosis, going to the court of Luzart, Amadis pursuing his search. And where wilt thou go, my friend, said he to the dwarf. I would remain and be your servant, quoth he, and kiss the hands of Amadis as his master. Not far had they travelled when they met one of the damsels who had disenchanted him, and she was lamenting loudly, and Amadis inquired wherefore of. Yonder knight hath taken a casket from me, which will not profit him, though with its contents the best knight in the world has delivered from death by me and my companions, whom another knight had now carried off with design to force her. Now the damsel knew not Amadis, by reason that his bever was closed, but he galp he forthwith galloping on overtook the knight, and soon forced from him the casket, and restored it to the damsel, and then hastened to her friend's deliverance. He he found struggling with the knight, who seeing him took his arms. In an evil hour dost thou hinder me of my will, God confound such a will, quoth Amadis. If I do not revenge myself, said the knight, I may never carry arms. The world will lose little by that, quoth he of Gaul, and meeting him in full career, drove him to the earth with a force that broke his neck, and then trampled him under his horse's feet. Amadis took off his helmet, and immediately the damsel knew him, and he remembered her, for it was she who had led him to deliver Uganda's friend from Castle Breodot. By this her companion by this her companion with Gandolin was come up, and they both embraced him and thanked him for their deliverance. On my faith, said he, in worse danger was I when you succored me. How knew ye of my plight? She who has taken him by the hand answered. My aunt Urganda bade me ten days ago hasten to be there by that hour. So Amadis commended himself to that his true friend, and courteously leaving, taking leave of the damsels, they departed each other on their way.